Thailand's floods are slowly inundating the capital Bangkok, with the death toll rising and worries over the economy intensifying. The government has been criticized for an indecisive response to the crisis. As Ron Corbin reports, local communities are bearing the brunt as people scramble to survive. Near the Chao Priya River, hundreds of families sought refuge from the flooding at the Wat Dusaram Warawin Temple. But as the flood waters have worsened, the temple itself is now threatened. Local businessmen Somchai Patanot and friends from the Lions Club used a longboat to transport essential goods to the temple. Roads were impassable due to the floods. Somchai says the head monk told him of lumbuck or trouble in Thai, and growing tensions in the local community. The monk phoned to me, they want water, yeah. some medicine, and milk, and food. Right, right. So they uh, said that they will really trouble, Rambak, Mark, Mark. Yeah, yes, yes. So uh, you have seen yourself, it's around, you can see. Right. Everything is very bad. Rambak, Mark, Mark, very trouble. Rambak, Rambak. Thailand is facing the most severe flood crisis in 50 years. The Thai Department of Disaster Relief and Mitigation says more than 500 people have perished, including more than 50 children by drowning and 50 people from electrocution. Over 3 million people are directly affected. Parata Promlert, head of the Thai Red Cross Society in Lopri, says communities are still in need of shelter, food and water. Dr. Parita says she's concerned about the spread of disease. I'm concerned about children and elderly. They evacuate from Bangkok and Batum Thani because they have children. That many families, almost every family has children. The Red Cross's chief concern at present is the threat of influenza and waterborne diseases due to the fetid water. Save the Children's spokesperson, Annie Bodmeroy, is also concerned about deteriorating health conditions. North of Bangkok, we see children playing in the water, bathing in it, or even just trying to wade their way through the water to get to dry ground. So it's, it's a major concern of ours because there's a real risk of disease, things like skin infections and diarrhea as children are exposed to the flood waters and also unclean drinking water. Health Ministry officials are warning communities of toxins from inundated factories, snakes and even crocodiles, as well as sewerage from housing estates. Flood waters also increase the likelihood of mosquito-borne diseases such as malaria, dengue fever and Japanese encephalitis. As communities remain inundated with water, tensions have grown. Some have moved to break down flood walls protecting central Bangkok from major flooding. The government has set up evacuation centres, but in several occasions they have been forced to relocate as centres themselves become inundated with water. Sri Suan Kuanachorn from the Foundation for Ecological Recovery says many people are resisting forced evacuations fearing their premises will be vulnerable to theft. Many of those uh, affected communities uh, do have capacity uh, to help themselves, they would rather they need uh, some external support, of course. But um, but they, uh, many of them have demonstrated uh, a certain capacity uh, in, in 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 the process of you know, trying to tackle this the flood situation. In the Bangkok slum community of Klong Toei, Catholic priest Joe Mayer says people are increasingly anxious living in evacuation centres and want to return to their homes despite the floods. And the people are getting more and more restless and they want to go home. Uh, and then they are going to go home no matter what. And then, you know, and especially the areas where the thieves are, where there's the theft. Um, yeah, we're going to have some real problems. And I don't think anybody's prepared for this. Other victims include thousands of migrant workers, mostly from Myanmar, Burma, but also Cambodia and Laos. Aid workers say as many as 600,000 migrant workers from factories in the north and east of Bangkok were stranded in worsening conditions. Many have been trapped in apartments without electricity, food or drinking water. Often they have been forced to pay exorbitant fees to be transported away from the floods. Human Rights and Development Foundation consultant Andy Hall says the situation facing migrant workers remains difficult. Um, why are the migrants staying there? You know, they're staying there because maybe they don't understand the situation. Maybe they're scared because they don't have documents. 
maybe they're being coerced to stay. I mean, we've got clear examples of, case, of cases where migrants are being coerced to stay in the, in the, in the communities because of uh, mafia, mafia organizations in those areas wanting to prevent their undocumented workers coming in contact with the authorities. The floods have devastated six major industrial estates now engulfed by floodwaters. The Thai government says over 10,000 factories have been engulfed with the loss of tens of thousands of jobs. Ron Corbin, FSRN, Bangkok.